Welcome back to the Kentucky History Podcast. I'm your host, Jameson Cable, and I'm here in Mount Sterling at the Kentucky History, or Montgomery County History Museum with Miles Hoskins, and he's going to tell us a lot about Montgomery County history, Mount Sterling, and so forth. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. Glad, glad to be here. Well, it's my first trip here in uh, to Mount Sterling to, well, not really Montgomery County. I've passed through, but, you know, to actually stop and visit and very... Very beautiful, very nice. I, I like the stone or the brick uh, uh, drive there. It's always nice to have those old kind of sentiments, I guess, if you want to say it that way. Yeah. Um, but let's begin by just telling us about your uh, Kentucky connection here in Montgomery County and all that. Well, I was born and raised here. Uh, lived out west for a while, California, a little while, five years in Idaho, but uh, I always came back to Kentucky. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> My old Kentucky home is my old <laughs> Kentucky home, so, uh, but I've been with the uh, historical, so I've been the president of the historical society for, I guess, 13 years now. Wow. Yeah. And uh, that was about the time that uh, when I became president that we uh, started the museum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And got a lot of good little historical uh, uh, pieces here, I, I assume all connected through Montgomery County? Yeah, we, we were trying to tell the story of Montgomery County. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so that's another thing. If you are in Montgomery County, Mount Sterling, you can come and probably see some of these things that we're going to be talking about here. Um, well, the old saying goes, you know, if, we're, if you're a Kentucky boy, one one foot's where you're at and the other one's planted, pointed back to Kentucky, yeah, right? So that's, right. It, that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. um, well, in all honesty, that was most most of that travel was with my parents when I was younger. Mm-hmm. So, okay. You yeah. Know, yeah. You got you to go with the parents. You know, oh, where, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where they go, you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, a few quick things uh, about Montgomery County. Uh, the county was established in 1796. It's named after Richard Montgomery, who was a Revolutionary War um, veteran, as is a lot of Kentucky counties were named after Revolutionary War veterans and, and uh, people well involved in the Revolution. Uh, Mount Sterling was sta- established in 1792, uh, and that's all of my end. Let's start out before then, before uh, all that stuff. Who, who was here first, or who... Uh, historically do we have evidence of, I guess? Well, we've, Mount Sterling is home to about, no, oh, about 30 uh, Adena period mounds, mm-hmm. uh, middle woodland period, mm-hmm. uh, which is about, well, it depends on who you ask, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a thousand BC to a thousand AD, somewhere in there. <laughs> that's, 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 that's that ought to cover it. Yeah, that's <laughs> a broad, broad, broad time period. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and uh, several of those mounds were uh, excavated by the University of Kentucky in mm-hmm. 1937. Oh, that's good. Yeah, uh, the Wright Mound, the Ricketts Mound, uh, uh, were both uh, leveled. Mm-hmm. Our Mount Sterling is named after a mound, actually, oh, because oh. Uh, Hugh Forbes and uh, Enoch Smith they came here just shortly after uh, Boone was at Boonesboro. It was 1775. They were there for two or three weeks and then came to Mount Sterling through the Buffalo Trace and found some land. They took some preemptions on some land. Mm -hmm. But the the landmark that they ran across was an Indian mound on Locust Street, which is present-day Locust Street. And uh, the middle of that mound, then they divided the property up on either side of that. and uh, Went from there. And went from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, now, eventually, and this is, I might be jumping ahead a little bit, but Morgan Station is that that's in Montgomery County, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that that was a that was a mm-hmm. famous Indian raid, and of course we had Estes defeat, but, mm-hmm. uh, which happened here. Mm-hmm. Now the Adena, uh, like, okay, so the Adena tribe was would have been, I guess, you know, not a lot of people know about that right. sort of stuff as as much. We talked about it a, lo- a long time ago on the podcast, but. Um, you know, more more people are f- familiar with Cherokee, Shawnee, um, uh, what's it, Uchi, uh, any of those. I mean, it's it's probably a good assumption to think that they were in the area at some point. Well, my I, my take on it is is that the the woodlands period, you know, they were yeah. Uh, but for whatever reason, whether it was climate or uh, tribal disputes or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that culture kind of broke apart. Yeah, yeah. And the tribes that we know today the Shawnee and the Wyandotte mm-hmm. and the Cherokee. Uh, I think when that 
separated and perfected mm-hmm. or whatever yeah. it did, that that's where we got all our modern tribes from, what mm-hmm. we call modern tribes, where we actually got some history on people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which, I mean, those are those are podcast episodes and in, in, in themselves talking about each, each different tribe. And, you know, it's common knowledge, you know, they used Kentucky as a hunting ground, um, not the entire state. You know, there was Chickasaw in the West and, and so forth. But for the primary, primarily, I would assume definitely Montgomery County might be in that hunting grounds area that, that mm-hmm. and so forth. But um, as you said, again, uh, the, the guys from uh, Daniel that came over from Boonesboro, what was their names again? Hugh Forbes mm-hmm. and Enoch Smith. They're yeah. the founders of the town. Uh-huh. And Hugh Forbes laid out the first lots down there about 17... Oh, 81, 82. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Uh, he was laying out a few lots on, on mm-hmm. there and sold those. And because... Uh, he was the first to kind of develop things. Yeah. Uh, they gave him the. We were known as Little Mountain Town. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Because of the mound. And in 1796, when we became, or, or, well, 92, I guess, actually, uh, when we became uh, incorporated, mm-hmm. they thought that that sounded too barbaric. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they, they changed the name and they let Hugh Forbes name the town. Well, he named it after the mound, the yeah. mount. Yeah. And he was from Sterling, Scotland. There you go. So we got Sterling. So Mount okay. Sterling's out. That's how we got our name. It's, it's always interesting. I find that, that one of the most interesting things sometimes when you're looking at history is where they got their names from. Yeah. You know, uh, in Lincoln County, you got um, Stanford. Well, you know, the, it, the, the first settlement was Logan's Fort and St. Asaph. And then it very, you know, they got to Standing Ford and then it became Stanford and... That's that's what stuck, yeah, you know. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you know you got other ones like Rock Castle was just named after Rock Castle County, just named after the river, um, and so forth. But um, anyway, so after as they settled in and kind of got the uh, the um, uh, town established, um, what 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 came next? What was the big industry, or what? what how fast did it grow? Or oh, not slow. Great. Yeah, it was very <laughs> slow. It was very slow because we were still having. A lot of problems with the Indians mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and just constant raiding, mostly stealing horses and yeah, taking yeah. a few captives and, you know, whatnot, mm-hmm. just quick raids in and out of yeah. Montgomery. Um, but in 1782, uh, Essel's defeat uh, happened here in Montgomery County. Mm. And uh, that all started when they saw a couple canoes float past Boonesboro and... Uh, they sent out the alarm. Yeah. Of some, uh, you probably know all about this. <laughs> well, no, you're fine. You keep <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they sent out the alarm and uh, got men from, uh, well, from Logan Station, mm-hmm. uh, Strode Station, mm-hmm. uh, all the local local stations. Yeah. All. They had about 40 to 50 men, and uh, they went out looking for the Indians. And uh, James Estill had established... Uh, as the station, and uh, he contributed. I think there were well. Matter of fact, he didn't leave anybody at the fort. He had a gun, <laughs> and uh, there were a couple of boys and a couple of young ladies, and you know some some families mm-hmm. there. And that was in a couple of slaves. Yeah, uh, Monk Estill being one of them, James Estill's, and he went out to. Uh, they were clearing uh, logs and, mm-hmm. and around the fort so they could you know have a better line of fire. Yeah, and. The Indians that night, while everybody was out chasing them, they circled back around and got over to Estill's and mm-hmm. hid in amongst those logs and the burning embers and kept warm that night. Mm-hmm. And when Monk and Jenny gassed and, and some of them went forward the next morning, Jenny was going down to tap some maple trees with a slave named Dick. And then uh, Monk was going down to, to, with a team of horses to clear. Mm-hmm. Well, they captured Monk and uh, Jenny Gass took off running and... Uh, the people in the fort were yelling, run, Jenny, run, mm-hmm. but she didn't make it. Yeah. And uh, so they they killed and scalped little Jenny Glass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then they would taunt the people in the fort. Yeah. They yeah. yelled, run, Jenny, run, uh, trying to get them to come mm-hmm, out. You know? mm-hmm. This whole time they were questioning Monk about the status of the Where number, everybody else number was, of people yeah. in there and stuff like that. And Monk convinced them that... Uh, there were several rifles in there and they didn't really have a chance so they may as well just leave so 
they hung around about a half a day and then did just that. Oh, wow. they, they, they oh. And took Monk with them. Uh-huh. Uh, well, a couple young boys from the fort, uh, they sent those two young boys out to look for Estel, mm-hmm. and they uh, caught up with Estel and told him what had happened. And so they rearranged their... A lot of people went back. They had five, six guys that decided, well, my wife's at the fort, so I'm going to go back. Mm-hmm. So he left out there with about 25 to 35 men. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, that's disputed all the pieces, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, who died and who, who didn't die. Who was there. Who, who deserved it and who didn't deserve it. And, <laughs> yeah. and there was uh, quite, a, quite a controversy over Ed's yeah. defeat for quite a while. Yeah. And they called it a defeat because it, it wasn't really a defeat, but it they left their dead on the field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they, they came back three days later. Yeah. Um, and um, for a burial uh, detail, yeah. didn't even have a shovel. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so they wound up just piling logs and sod and rock on oh. James Essel and his men. So mm-hmm. that's, that's how it got the connotation of the yeah. deed. Yeah. Now, if uh, for somebody that's you know not from Montgomery County, where where is that located as opposed to, say, Mount Sterling? Because... That's obviously the biggest, people will know where Mount Sterling is, but mm-hmm. where, where did that happen at? Well, if they're on the interstate of Mount Sterling, on the westbound lane, yeah. between the mile markers 113, 110, mm-hmm. it's right down at the bottom of the hill where okay. Inkston Creek crosses. Yeah, okay. Um, is there any historical marker or anything like that? Or? There was until yeah. they built the interstate. Ah, gotcha. Where James Estill fell is under the westbound lane of the interstate. There you go. Well, I mean. <laughs> and they said... <laughs> They said, well, if, if we were building this road in Washington, D.C., we'd tear the Washington Monument down. <laughs> so they, they, they bulldozed it right out and went right on. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's the way it goes. Uh, but that just, oh, from downtown, that's about a mile. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So they, they camped downtown, but that morning they got up and they ran across the Indians about oh, a half mile. They camped about a half mile apart. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. Uh, and the story goes is that the Indians were... Uh, field dressing a buffalo mm. um, and when they came upon them but I don't know how I don't know how factual that is mm-hmm. because it, they didn't say anything about bows and arrows they all had British weapons yeah yeah um, so if they just shot a buffalo within a half a mile of that hopper you know it's a big yeah. hopper running yeah. through there uh, they would have heard that so yeah. I, I don't know but anyway mm-hmm. Story goes that, that, that was that, that close. That, that was that close. Wow, wow. Well, that's a, uh, yeah. That's that's one. That's one thing. That's how stories go. Sometimes you know, they may not make the or make as much logical sense. But so, you know, that was in seventeen. You said eighty two. So mm-hmm. right at the uh, March twenty second. Yeah, right 82. near the close of the Revolutionary War. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and then actually it was it was. Kind of winding down, it was really mm-hmm. almost over with, but then they had in a couple more little Then more blue licks and blue that licks. sort of stuff. Blue yeah. licks happened next, and, mm-hmm. and uh, that was kind of the end of it in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, which a lot, like a lot of people don't realize how what was going on in Kentucky during the Revolutionary mm-hmm. War, you know, many uh, battles and so forth. They don't, you know, the Native Americans were being, you know, kind of pushed by the British mm-hmm. to, you know, do the, you know, to invade, and uh, which not that the Na- Native Americans didn't have their own agenda too. To, they didn't want people in Kentucky anyway, right. so it was a win-win for that, both of those uh, factors. Um, but anyway, so let's I guess move on a little more. Um, uh, you know, Mount Mount Sterling's established um, in 1793. Two, oh, 93. Okay, was when Morgan Station happened. Okay, okay, yeah. That was the last. Quote, unquote, mm-hmm. last Indian raid in Kentucky. <laughs> Another it's debatable, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. Uh, but uh, it was uh, April 1st. Mm-hmm. They had uh, Sunday was Easter. Mm-hmm. And uh, the next day, uh, they, they attacked uh, Morgan Station. And uh, they weren't that well equipped or... They weren't really ready for a, an Indian raid because everything had been so quiet for so long mm-hmm. that yeah. half the stockade had been torn down. Yeah, and they were just there was just some cabins in a square kind mm-hmm. of really, and they killed about like nine people and captured nine more. Oh, and wow! Yeah, took them to Ohio and but they killed about five on the way. Mm-hmm. They couldn't keep up. Then yeah. women's and children were yeah were tomahawked on the way mm-hmm. and, and so. 
Now, and now if that, so, um, cause, well, and, and another thing, I mean, people listening probably know, but, you know, as these, as people came in, the stations just, you know, they, they would just spread out. And um, was Morgan Station pretty much an outlier? It was. It, yeah. was, it was about oh, six miles from, from Mount Sterling. Okay. And that was another thing, you know, you, the more stations, the more reliable, you know, I guess backup, if you want to say, you know, you could send people, but um, being the outlier is never a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. By the time everybody else got word, and what, you know, of course they just scattered, you know, like quail. They were oh. just running every which way trying to get away because mm -hmm. they, they really didn't have much defense. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, There's a book about that, right? By, um, Harry Eney wrote a yeah. really good book mm -hmm. about Morgan uh, Station. Yeah. Um, so as things though, as that progresses, um, and we'll, 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 I'll ask you this too, um, before we get into more of just, just history, you know, Mount Sterling's the county seat. Um, is what's the other, what's some other communities or, or towns that, uh, are in, inside Montgomery? That... Well, Camargo is about three miles south. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just a little small community up until mm -hmm. after the Civil War. Yeah. It got its name from the Mexican War. Oh wow! Well, you don't see People that. People from Camargo. Okay. Went down there to fight, and they fought in, the, in a little town called Camargo down there. <laughs> which there's another Camargo in Spain. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that's that's where Camargo got its name because mm -hmm. they came back and thought that was a neat name. And uh, they didn't, that's, they didn't that's really cool. have one, so they, <laughs> they named it Camargo. And I grew up in Camargo, and the tale out there is. Uh, we always thought it was an Indian name. Oh yeah, but, Camargo. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Possibility, <laughs> but uh, I, I guess we were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that I think it's a pretty it's a pretty unique name. Uh, which I mean, Kentucky has plenty of unique names from all over the place. You know. Of course, there's Jeffersonville, which is about mm -hmm. two more miles south of Camargo, mm -hmm. and it was called Tick Town for the longest time. Oh wow! And, That's a yeah, tick a lot of ticks, I guess. Or well, uh, yeah, well, Mount Sterling by the Civil War days uh, had become kind of kind of regional hub mm -hmm. to sell livestock. Yeah, and, and they were they were driving hogs and things in from Missouri. Oh wow! To Mount Sterling mm -hmm. uh, for our our market, uh, of course, horses and cattle and mm -hmm. tobacco. And, yeah, and uh, when they were driving, uh, oh, they even drove a herd of geese. A flock of geese from McGoffin <laughs> County. Okay. <laughs> now the, they used to call that the Pound Gap Road. That's 460 mm -hmm. now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Goes all the way into into Pike. Okay. Uh, but uh, when they were bringing their livestock in, they couldn't bring them in without taking them through a couple of dipping pools. Yeah. To get the lice and the ticks and all the uh, okay. disease off of them. Yeah. So they had some dipping pools out there, and because that's where the dog ticks came off, they called that tick down. <laughs> Until after the Civil War, and then they, they named it, I, I suppose, for Jefferson Davis. It was a, oh, okay. It was heavily, heavily Confederate. He, heavily yeah. Confederate out of Jeffersonville. Well, see, well, I was thinking Jefferson, you know, Thomas Jefferson, but I guess that would make, that makes more sense. You know, Jefferson yeah, Davis would be. It didn't have a name until after mm -hmm. that, so I, mm -hmm. yeah. I, that's right, yeah. Um, that's what we assume happened anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so, I mean, like besides, so from you know, say 1800 to you know, say the Civil War during that time period, um, you know, farming, um, pretty much a, a pretty common. I mean, it was yeah, it the was driving normal. force, uh, economic driving force, I guess, for the for the the area. Um, Anything specific, farming specific, besides just tobacco, the, or the common things, or well, horses, and then mm -hmm. we had we had several people that were, you know, uh, Dr. Luther Calvin Jeffries, who lived in Camargo until in the eighteen fifties, and then about the time the Civil War broke out, he moved to the other end of the county. But mm -hmm. uh, they dabbled in shorthorn cattle. Yeah, uh, he tried hedges for a fence. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, he, he was rather progressive. Yeah. And, uh, uh, started a school out there, but mostly it was horses and tobacco. Yeah. Uh, and, Pretty much. Uh, of course, they had the court days. Mount Sterling was famous for its court days. Yeah. When did that get started? Oh, early 1800s. <laughs> oh, wow. As soon as they got the circuit going. Uh huh. Wow. That's and, that well. Uh, they would have, once a month, they would have court. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it was usually on the third Monday. Yeah. It still is. And uh, so we have about 100,000 people come into Mount Sterling. Wow. That's a lot. It's a third, lot of, third weekend in October. Uh, I'm trying to think of like uh, what you would cons- what's the population of Mount Sterling in general? Uh, <laughs> about eight thousand. <laughs> so it's, it's oh, uh, we, wow. It get pretty out of hand around. I there. would say so. <laughs> it lasts for four days now. Yeah. Well, and uh, then it's got an offshoot that started over in Bath County in Preston, and they have about thirty, forty thousand over there. Wow. wow. Wow, I, I, I always am fascinated about the stuff that has you know got started so early and has continued because that's well tradition, I guess, is all it, all it is. But you know, and the farmers would all come into court day and they'd bring their, their they had two big ones. One was in April, and one was in, in October. Mm-hmm. In April, they would, all the farmers would come in and buy their seed corn and yeah. and uh, Timothy and whatever mm-hmm. they were going to sow, and uh, maybe bring a calf or two in or yeah. You know, stuff like that. And then the fall was just the opposite. They were bringing in their tobacco crops yeah, and all that. Old. And they came into court to gossip and find out <laughs> all the news. And they'd load the whole family up, you know, and yeah. take all day coming into town yeah. and going back out. So, uh, And that's still a tradition today. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Well, you know, yeah, you think about when it got started, you know, it probably if you were in the – so Mount Sterling, is it, it's kind of the southern – is it a bit more southern or central? It's due east of Lexington, really. So well, well, central. I mean, of, of Montgomery County, Mount Sterling is. It, oh, it's about dead in the middle. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's pretty, pretty close to central. Which I guess in, in the case of court days, you got hundred thousand people. They're coming from everywhere, not just Montgomery County. Right, so, right. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just thinking of like how long it take it would take, you know, if you were in the say the northern or southern part to get to Mount Sterling. You know, you're looking at a, a, a good little ride to get there to sell yeah. sell your crop. It'd take two or three hours to drive in for the buggy, yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 one. yeah. Uh, now I don't know, maybe what fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I live out that way, so okay. it, it's, it takes about fifteen minutes. Yeah. 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 Um, now, you know, we mentioned a little bit a uh, uh, civil war. So, and we we can be brief because I'm sure, like every county in Kentucky, we could do a whole episode on the oh, yeah. the, the involvement of the civil war. But anything, any big skirmishes, or or you know, you already said it was pretty Confederate loyal. Um, well, it was Jeffersonville. But the county was pretty much split. Okay. Yeah. Of course, Kentucky was under martial law. Yeah. yeah. And uh, our courthouse, just like all other little courthouses, had a contingency of Union troops to. Mm-hmm. to keep the law and order. Mm-hmm. They weren't really here to fight the war. They were here Just to keep neighbors police. from killing yeah. neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which a lot of that went on during the Civil uh-huh. War. They would settle old scores. And, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. just, it was a pretty lawless time, really. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, and then continued after the Civil War. To- <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it was continued to the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's war will ever quit. Fight, it, it, I know it is. I it's don't know a, why, but, it's uh, it's interesting. Some of the people want to hold on to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did the courthouse burn? It did. Okay. It did. Our courthouse yeah. burned. Uh, which that's an odd. It's an odd question to ask, but it's a very common Civil War oh, thing for the courthouse yeah. to burn. Well, to beat it all, our own Pete Edward, who his dad was uh, mm-hmm. uh, Samuel Dedman Edward. He was the Probably the richest man in Montgomery County. Yeah. He owned about 30 slaves. Mm-hmm. And his son Pete lived up here in a motel, didn't even didn't even live right, <laughs> right down the road where his dad, you know, yeah. got the big fancy house up here. Uh, and uh, led the life of a playboy pretty much. Mm-hmm. But when the war broke out, he joined the Confederacy uh. because of his, you know, his dad's leanings. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was stationed in Abington, Virginia. Yeah. And he told the general down there, said, if you'll give me 40, 50 men, said, I can go into Kentucky and I can I can keep them tied up for a month. Oh, wow. Chasing me around. Yeah. And the guy said, well, you know, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And he said, get your men together. So he started rounding up little, he, his, his bunch was shot down to about 20 guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just kept recruiting and recruiting and recruiting. Yeah. So they left Abington and... And one night they were in Sagersville, uh-huh. where they had the Battle of Ivy Point, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so when they left Sagersville, well, first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, they came upon Sagersville, and the, and the forward guard said, "Well, we got troops just like Montgomery County. You mm-hmm. know, we got troops at the courthouse." Mm-hmm. 
And so he said, well, I, there's no way I'm going to get. But this time he had about 100 men that he, that he picked up. Yeah. And uh, he said, there's no way I'm going to get 100 men on horseback through this area mm -hmm. without being seen. And he said, I've got mouse thrown in front of me and I don't want somebody behind me. So they decided to bum rush the boys in Sagersville and mm -hmm. there was the battle ensued there. And uh, he shot and wounded my great-great-grandfather, uh, which uh, he died in Lexington six months later. Oh, wow. <laughs> Pete didn't shoot him. Somebody did. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me clarify. Yeah. Don't know who shot him, but somebody shot yeah. him. Uh, and he died in Lexington, like I said, six mm -hmm. months later from his wound, so he lingered over there for six months. Mm -hmm. And then Pete came on into Mount Sterling. In one day, he wrote from McGoffin County. Oh, out wow. to, camped out on his brother's farm out on Spencer. Uh -huh. And the next morning, about three in the morning, they, they attacked Mount Sterling and burned the courthouse and just stole everything they could yeah. and, wow. and uh, skedaddled off towards Owensville. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew where they were. They yeah. burned, set the courthouse on fire to kind of give them some cover. Yeah. And everybody was trying to put the fire out and forgot to look to see which way they <laughs> went. <laughs> so Where'd everybody you? was out, which way did they go? Yeah. Did they go? Well, good distraction, obviously. And, you know. and he was true to his word. He kept them busy and tied up. Before. Went three days later, he was back in Abington, and they were still running all well, over. Well, looking for him. So. Wow. Um, now, well, what year What year would that have been? 63. 63. Okay. Well, I'm, you know, I'm trying to think of, like, there was all the... Um, uh, guerrilla warfare, same thing happening in western Kentucky, but that was more in um, 64, uh, uh, most of that, because uh, I don't know if Burbridge was here No, yet. Burbridge wasn't. No. Yeah, because that would have been, I think that was 64 when he he uh, yeah. came in. Kirby uh, Smith and some of those were here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, then John Hunt Morgan, of course, yeah. from Lexington, yeah. he, he made a raid here on, in uh, June 6th. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and robbed our bank. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and then he went on to Lexington, and well, he went on to Lexington that day that they had the battle, Yeah. and uh, then that night they robbed the bank. Mm -hmm. Now, whether whether it was under his orders to do, or or, yeah. or it's just a, somebody needs a money. Op operation there. <laughs> I, or somebody they said, got about 70 grand out yeah. of the bank. Somebody said, there's a bank, well, let's rob it. <laughs> yeah, yeah may as well. And by that time, uh, you know, I know I'm going to get flack for this, but Morgan had pretty much generated into a, uh, just a plain old gorilla. He, yeah, he, yeah. He was an outlaw, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big reward on his head. Yeah, yeah. And we have his saddle back here. Oh, cool. In the museum. Yeah. Well, what the? Yeah. It was captured up in West Point. Okay. When he made the farthest trade. You know? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, we actually have his saddle mm -hmm. back here in the, in the museum. Um, with, with that, because I, I, you know, oftentimes, you know, people... Um, well, well, with Kentucky during the Civil War, very complicated time, of course. Um, but um, I mean, do you consider Montgomery County like Eastern Kentucky, or? Well, they always called us the Gateway. Yeah, yeah. Because they're we're really in the, what they call the Knobs region. We're not, mm -hmm. not. We're we're out on the cusp of the bluegrass. You yeah, know? but you know, it's getting starting to get a little more hilly, right? Yeah, where I live is is, is Knob country. Mm -hmm. I live about nine miles southeast. Yeah. And there's a knob on my farm. Yeah. And then you go back Keep. a knob or two, and then mm. you nothing but mountains. Then yeah. yeah. hit you real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and the reason I uh, kind of bring that up is, you know, a lot of people um, kind of think, you know, Eastern Kentucky was very union, and not that they weren't, uh, but, you know, there was still plenty of Confederate, it, it, it pretty much like, you know, the the stereotypical brother versus brother it was. Is, it was all over the state. Yeah. It was not as... Uh, well, it was just a matter of property, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Most of the people in eastern Kentucky, uh, they didn't own slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. My my people up there, they did, they were just scratch gravel farmers. <laughs> yeah, they were doing the best yeah. they could. Yeah, and, uh, yeah you know, no coal boom had hit really yet, so no, that yeah. everybody was just farming on the yeah. side of the mountain. On the side of the mountain, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, they, you know, they couldn't afford a slave and didn't have anything for him to do if they did, you know. <laughs> well, there was probably plenty for him to do, but that. Yeah. Uh, Slavery wasn't an issue in eastern Kentucky, but now you mm -hmm. get down in here where you had farms mm -hmm. and uh, big get... plantations and stuff, and yeah, that's where you, you had more slave owners mm -hmm. in Montgomery County probably than, than a lot of counties. Yeah, especially to the east. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and well, you know, we mentioned this too, you know, after the Civil War, 
you know, everybody just shook hands and forgot about it all and moved, <laughs> moved on. <laughs> but, uh, but that wasn't the case yeah, at all. Exactly the case, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. They, uh, uh, um, well, I, I want to talk about schools in a, in a little bit. But um, so anything big happened afterwards, like after the Civil War? Um, you know, uh, like we mentioned, you know, coal, not, not really in this area as much. Um, if at all, was it even at all? Uh, the next big thing that happened was the railroad came through. Yeah, there you go. In 1872. That, cha that changes everything. <laughs> sure did, sure did. Because we'd always been a, a big marketplace, but now we actually had a way to move our goods. Get it going. Anywhere. Anywhere we wanted to. And uh, so we became even more important coordinated. And, yeah. And just in general, the stockyards, and Lord, there was five or six stockyards <laughs> in the store, you know, when I was growing up. Yeah, there were yeah. Four. And, uh, and now we have one. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so. Once the train left, it all yeah, kind of yeah, the train's gone. Uh -huh. uh, how long? I mean, when did? Well, this is probably jumping up way. When when did the uh, when did the last? Or is there still a train? No, it go through or is it eighty? Mm, eighty. Don't hold me to this. Eighty two, I think, yeah. somewhere right in there, mid eighties. Well, I mean, you said you know seventy two to about a hundred years. About a hundred years, mean, we had a, had, a, had a good train service, mm -hmm. and, and it, it. There were three trains ran through here. Wow! Yeah, uh, a day. Well, yeah, that's. Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's that's that was good for the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that means a lot of stuff's coming coming in and out. But just in the Civil War, I don't know. I, I tell people this, and I don't really know if it's. I think it's true, but I <laughs> I, I know I'll probably get, you know, <laughs> feedback. Uh, we changed hands twelve times. Oh wow! So it could have been the most fought over town in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're talking about, about yeah. Mount Sterling. Wow. Because, you know, <laughs> I like to say about every time a general changes his underwear, they decide to come to Mount Sterling. <laughs> that's, that's, I got the big shorts, boys, let's go to Mount Sterling. <laughs> yeah. you know. oh. Wow, that, that's, that, that is a lot, though, because, I mean, which I mean. Lexington, possibly. Mm -hmm. But that was a major. But I don't think they changed hands that many times. No, I mean, I can only think of th three times that it changed. I mean, it was Union, and then the Confederates came in, took it for like a day. That's usually what happened here. And, and, then, and then the Union came back, and then then they came back in and took it for maybe a month, and then the Union came back in. Because cause this is this is a quick lesson in history uh, fact. Um, uh, was the only racetrack to run run horses under the Union flag and the Confederate flag. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because it, it changed, and you know, I mean, we're talking about uh, we're talking about Lexington here. And they're gonna they're gonna run horses no matter what. You know, yeah, <laughs> no matter who's in control, we're gonna yeah. race some horses. Yeah. Uh, so Mount Sterling changed hands a lot. Yeah, changed hands a lot. Uh, <laughs> they, they may they may be the winner if that's the case. It could be. Now I think Winchester. Mm -hmm. Virginia. Oh, yeah. Changed hands more times mm -hmm. than we did. Yeah. But I, I could about say we were the most fought over town in the Civil War. <laughs> but I know I'd probably get feedback. <laughs> that. So if you're out there and you know anything, let me know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely say the most fought over in Kentucky. Most about. fought over in Montgomery County, anyway. <laughs> 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 that's right. That's good. Uh, so, um, you know, after the Civil War, um, you know, the railroad comes in, um, you know, farming still high top industry um, and, and so forth. Uh, any, any big events that are um, notable, you know, uh, I've talked to, you know, obviously a big event during the 1900s was the global assassination of the governor and all that stuff. Um, pretty big event, but, you know, in Montgomery County, anything you can think of that's like just unusual or just interesting? Well, uh, I... Probably wouldn't hurt to tell the story about Richard Reed. Richard Reed was a, probably one of the best jurisprudence minds in the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was a frail individual, though. He'd been hurt when he was young. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the, somebody take care of him, picked him up too hard or too quick or oh. something. And he never was right. He mm -hmm. was just a real, real frail little man. But he, he had a big mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so one day, J.J. Uh, Cornelius, which is another lawyer here at Mount Sterling, and we were eat up with lawyers. I mean, we had, 
<laughs> Too many. <laughs> about as many lawyers as we did horses. Uh, it's not much different today. You know? <laughs> uh, still got a lot of lawyers. But uh, Corneliuson, uh, under the auspices that we're going to talk about, uh, a case that's pending between the two of us, mm-hmm. asked Judge Reed over well, when the judge got there. Uh, he took a cane and started beating him. Oh, man. And he beat him out of outside the, onto the street where he grabbed a buggy whip and started whipping him down the street. Oh. Well, like I said, he was a frail man. He was mm-hmm. a Christian. Mm-hmm. And uh, he turned the other cheek. Wow. Well, uh, it's like all small towns. A week or two, tongues started wagging. Well, mm-hmm. Because he would have been perfectly within his rights. He could have shot him dead. Yeah. And nobody would have said a thing about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just the way the times were. Well, the more raised yeah. were Southern gentlemen. You, mm-hmm. you protected your, your reputation. Yeah. And uh, that was just the way it was. But uh, that wasn't the way Richard was. So, mm-hmm. uh, And talk, talk kept building and building and building yeah. and building. And finally, uh, he killed himself in 1884. Oh, man. He, uh, and the interesting part of that is, is that his wife, who wrote a book about him, uh, he's buried in McPelia Cemetery. Mm-hmm. And if you drive down Main Street, you can see McPelia Cemetery up on the hill. Yeah. You can see Judge Reed's statue mm-hmm. with his back turned towards Mount Sterling. Oh. And his wife said Mount Sterling tra- turned its back on Richard. Oh. So I'm turning his back to Mount Sterling when I bury him. Oh, wow. And... Uh, well, I, that that that's a pretty. That was Richard Reed. Richard Reed. Reed. Okay. Richard Reed. Oh wow. And if you if you go into about the same time period, uh, a lot of people don't know, but uh, Nancy Green mm-hmm. was born here in Montgomery County. Now she later became known as Aunt Jemima. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she was born here in Montgomery County out on Somerset Creek. Okay. And she moved to Maysville after the war with, with the Walker family, and they moved to Chicago. And, and, then, and uh, she took care of a judge's kid that's up there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a lawyer, and he represented the Pearl Milling Company. And he decided, uh, or they decided, they needed a spokesman. And he said, "What are you looking for?" And they told him, and he said, "Well, you don't have to look any further. She works for me." <laughs> so she got the job, and yeah. she became Aunt Jemima, and went to the 1893 uh, World's Fair, yeah. mm-hmm. where she uh, sold. 50,000, they say, wholesale wow. orders of pancakes. Wow. And flipped a million. Oh, man. That's a lot of, that's that's of, a lot, that's a lot of flipping. Yeah. <laughs> they said they, since she had a great big barrel, they made a great big barrel. It's like a flower barrel. Mm-hmm. She could walk to the door, walk all the way through it, and then they had a grill on one side and, and shelves on the other. And she's. It had the product on it. Uh huh. Wow. Of course, that's been a controversy, and they took Aunt Jemima off now. It's known mm-hmm. as Pearl. Again, yeah, the syrup and, and the pancake mm-hmm. mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, that's about you know, right here in Montgomery County. Right that's pretty Montgomery cool, County. yeah, yeah. And then along about the same period, well, 1900, mm-hmm. uh, well, she died in Chicago in 22, I think. She was run over by a car. Oh, gosh, mm-hmm. jumped the curb and drunk driver. Yeah, we've had drunk drivers all along. Since you've had cars, since the cars, cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, I was, I was, I was sitting there thinking, well, 1920, you know, I guess cars weren't, were still kind of new, so yeah, you know, they, but. they were still out of control. <laughs> uh, I read the newspaper article here in town one time. They they put the speed limit as 10 miles an hour down Main Street when cars came along. Yeah. Cause that's about as fast as a buggy was going to go. Mm-hmm. And they didn't want a cars, you know, smashing it, <laughs> running all around, uh, oh. scaring the horses and yeah. the women and the children. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been. It had been nice to be a fly on the wall when cars. Oh came yeah, out, yeah. You think about well. Wow. People can't drive today, but back then they probably yeah. <laughs> they didn't know how to. Yeah. They didn't even have a wheel; they had to stick. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, well. And then in but around nineteen hundred. Uh, Carrie Nation came to Mount Sterling. Okay, yeah, uh, that's. Uh, well, she's a Kentucky native, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, uh, she was against that liquor, boy. Mm-hmm. Which, which she was born right in, right on the Garrett Lincoln line there, that, um, I, I real close to Crab Orchard and uh, Lan- Lancaster and all that oh, stuff. Okay, yeah. I, I knew it was right in there yeah. somewhere, right in there. Yeah, she's an interesting one too. Yeah, she was, <laughs> and you know we 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 got a pick. Uh, 
a big blow up of her over here. Mm-hmm. We blew up and uh, have our whole jail door. Well, she came in to Mount Sterling and and you know she was she was she was six foot tall. Man, people don't know that. About I, did, her. I didn't know that. No. She was six foot tall. And with a hatchet and a Bible, so I bet she was pretty <laughs> intimidating, forbidden. <laughs> yeah, you know. And uh, I could just see her outside of a saloon, a saloon you know. And everybody was drunk. Uh-huh. I mean, it was a drunken period in the United mm-hmm. States ever. And that's why all the women were put. You know, their husbands weren't working; they weren't taking no. care of their families. And and so she'd get outside a saloon and she'd start preaching the evils of drink. And before long, she'd probably have a crowd of <laughs> ladies around her whose husbands yeah. were. In there, much. getting there. Yeah, in there, too. <laughs> getting lit. And uh, she'd get them all worked up, and then they'd bust in. Well, she busted up a saloon, they threw her in jail here. Oh. And when she got out, she said she'd been in jail all over the United States, but Mount Sterling had the dirtiest jail she'd ever been in. <laughs> so that was our claim to fame at the time. <laughs> we had a really good, dirty jail. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but I, you know. <laughs> I don't either, but it left an impression on Carrie Nation. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, well, I guess the, the point of a jail is to, to get people to change their ways, and I don't know if it changed their ways. <laughs> but, no, she didn't change a bit, I don't know. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, I guess in her, her ways weren't what really needed to be changed, and it was the people she was going after that probably needed to change their ways. Yeah, more. that's probably yeah. But we, we got her over here behind the old jail door that came out of the old jail when they tore her mm-hmm. down. Wow. So we put her in jail over here that's in the museum. Cool. And, that's and cool. Yeah. Tell her tale. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy to think that, like, you know, her intentions were were probably good. Now, now, should she have you know, you know, <laughs> trashed the place? Probably not. But you know, they arrested her, and I'm sure there was plenty of drunks there that needed to probably be arrested. But you know, she gets arrested. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna stop right here with our discussion with Miles Hoskins about Montgomery County history. Remember to go and visit the Montgomery County History Museum in downtown Mount Sterling. A lot of great artifacts. Any history buff is gonna enjoy. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next time.